Guys, I'm really happy to welcome to the podcast my friend Eric Metaxas. Eric is a syndicated radio host on the Salem Network. He also is the founder of the group Socrates in the City. Eric, you had me come speak several years ago at Socrates in the City. He's published articles a whole bunch of places. He has a number of books, but the most recent one, I've just finished reading it. It's great stuff. It's called Is Atheism Dead? Um, Eric, welcome. Uh, let me start by asking you the title, Is Atheism Dead? Is this a kind of reference to Nietzsche's famous declaration, God is dead? Are you sort of turning the tables on good old Nietzsche. Well, it's it's a second generation uh, reference to Nietzsche. In 1966, Time Magazine, referring to Nietzsche's infamous statement, had a, 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 a an infamous, equally infamous uh, and shocking cover article that asked, is God dead? That was 1966, what I think of as the high watermark of secularism uh, in the mid 20th century, science seemed definitively to be pushing God out of the picture. You hear about the God of the gaps, that, that more and more science was answering questions and making less room for God. Um, and so they asked a provocative question and put this very provocative question in the middle of American living rooms. Is God dead? And the funny thing, Dinesh, is that that caught on as a cultural narrative that has been with us ever since. We hear about science being the enemy of faith. The new atheists, particularly uh, Hitchens and Dawkins, uh, often said it like a marketing slogan over and over that there's reason on the one hand and science on the one hand, and on the other hand, faith and religion. And ironically, because I think of God as the master ironist, since 1966, evidence has been in, very dramatic evidence from the world of all things science that points inevitably to a creator, to an intelligent designer, whatever you want to call it, that there's not the ghost of a chance based on the new scientific evidence that all of this came about randomly as the materialists and the scientistic uh, atheists have asserted. So I thought the evidence has piled up quietly. It's been mostly ignored. It's so dramatic. I said, it's, it's time we call the bet. Uh, if anything, the question is no longer, is God dead? The question is, is atheism dead? Hence the, the title of the book. Let's talk for a minute about Hitchens, because Hitchens is, first of all, now dead. Uh, I did a series of debates, about 10 of them, with Hitchens around the country. Uh, one thing I want to point out about Hitchens, I don't know if you know this, but you, you might, that when Hitchens was a teenager, when he was a young student at Oxford, uh, his mother, who had essentially abandoned the family and ran off with a clergyman, an, uh, um, an Anglican clergyman, and the two of them entered into a suicide pact together in which they went into a hotel room and jointly committed suicide. And this news was transmitted to young Hitchens as a student. Now, the reason I'm saying all this is that, you know, we'll read Hitchens as God is not great. We think we're reading a kind of intellectual argument against God. And of course, Hitchens had that debater's panache. But what I'm suggesting is that Hitchens was a wounded theist, and that behind his atheism, you have this deep wound caused by a kind of tragedy in his own family. Of course, he rarely talks about any of that, but very often when you when you come across an atheist and you look more closely, you see that they are actually in some angry struggle with God rather than that they've looked at the evidence and they've been convinced by Einstein's theory of relativity that there's no God. It's really more that they've got a beef with God, isn't it? There is absolutely no question of that. Now, I don't go into Hitchens uh, in that sense, per se, in the book, but I do discover or at least talk about the almost astonishing shallowness of his arguments. I mean, here you have an incredibly brilliant man who, when it comes to philosophizing about God, is, is like an eighth grader or, or something. He is just vicious. Uh, he's he's hyper-polemical ad hominem. He seems to want to do anything to wound his opponent. He doesn't seem interested in truth. And of course, you have to ask the big question. If atheism were to be true, if there's no God, then it follows there's no meaning. Then your life, Christopher Hitchens, and my life has no meaning, and there's no such thing as truth. Why are you debating with such passion, with such anger? 
it simply makes no sense. Your very passion proves that you can't live as an actual atheist. So none of it makes sense. I was, I was truly taken aback by uh, the shallowness of the new atheists. And I found myself turning to the old atheists, to people like Sartre and Camus and others who took it very seriously. And when you take it seriously, you see it is infinitely bleak and troubling. Uh, and maybe a big headline in this book is that I discovered to my shock that both Sartre and Camus at the end of their lives came through to the other side, to faith in God. I said, how is this possible? I've never heard this, but it's true. Uh, it's amazing. And I think it is very telling that those who look most seriously at this subject came out on the other side. We only need to know about it and tell others. When we come back, I want to talk to uh, Eric Metaxas about some of these remarkable findings in biblical archaeology that are a vindication not only of the Old, but also of the New Testaments.